The last chapter of One Piece, chapter 1000, was the big, monumental, oh my god, chapter 1000. Congratulations to Achira Oda, Achira Oda, for achieving this monumental milestone. We, the One Piece fandom, are truly grateful for Oda's greatness. That is without question. However, in the chapter, there were a few things that caught folks' attention, in particular, one of the things was about Luffy's dream, or Luffy's quote-unquote true dream. Now, this of course comes from the Ace flashback material, where Yamato was talking to Momonosuke, and then she says, but when he died, I remembered something. And then Ace, ah, uh, shoot, that wasn't with the tongue, I wasn't supposed to say that. You didn't hear that, forget about it. Um, anyway, don't laugh at that. Me and Sabo won't allow it. That is the end of my little brother's dream. Luffy, has another layer to his dream that we are not privy to. Now this kind of sounds crazy because every every time possible in both anime and in manga, Luffy Kaizo Kaoni. Like we know, Luffy wants to be the Pirate King. His dream should be to be the Pirate King, unequivocally. How can there be another component of his dream that we aren't privy to when we hear it time and time again, I wanna be the King of the Pirates? Well, it's actually a very interesting thing, but I think Oda is setting up this grandiose, really epic panel he has in mind. Like a really epic, oh my God panel. It'll be a panel that I'm pretty sure he's gonna spend a lot of time drawing out. A lot of time, a lot of details. Let me see a panel. It's gonna be a pretty epic double page spread when we do get to it, without question. What is important is looking back. This is actually a trend that Oda has established in the series where both Luffy and Roger, they have a component to their dream that's kept hidden, that the audience doesn't know at this point in time. So the very first chapter that this is noted to, as far as I understand, is chapter 585 in the ASL flashback. In this chapter, you have Ace, Sabo, and Luffy state their goals, state their dreams, and why they wanna be pirates. First, Sabo starts off, Ace, Luffy, let's go out to sea someday. Let's get out of this country so we can be free. I want to see the world and write a book about it. And navigation is the one thing I like to study. Let's get strong and become pirates. Then Ace follows him and says, ha, you don't have to convince me. I'm gonna be a pirate and win, win, win. I'll be famous all over the world. I'll prove my life's worth something. No matter how many people in the world don't approve of me, no matter how many hate me, I'm going to become a great pirate and show them all. I won't run away from anyone. I won't lose to anyone. I don't care if they call me a villain. I'll make the whole world know my name. And then Luffy, <laughs> okay then, I'll, I want to be, cuts off, ace, Sabo, huh? Luffy laughs, and then Ace, I can't believe you actually said that. And then Sabo laughs, laughs, you're funny Luffy. I can't wait to see what you'll be like in the future. So I could be wrong on this one, but I think that's the first time we actually get this. If not, it's one of the few times where we get this, where we have the cutting off of Luffy's dream. Again, it should be a given because Pirate King, but no, no, no. Not only is it in Luffy's case in the SL flashback, but also it applies to Gold D. Roger. Gold D. Roger in the Oden flashback in chapter 966, when he is talking to Wiper and Oden, he's talking about a place called Lodestar and how they actually had to reach Lodestar. But when him and his crew disembarked, they realized that Lodestar was not the final island. And then so he proclaims to Wiper and Oden, there is one more island and only by going there Will the unprecedented circumnavigation of the globe be complete? He continues on to talk about the pony glyphs, and then he says, The stories say that a vast treasure awaits on the final island, and the government says don't go there. That only makes the stories about treasure more believable. If we can get there, we'll be the greatest pirate crew in the world in both name and fact. That's right. And then I'll be. And as time passes, his words cut off. Roger. Whitebeard. Oden. Huh? Very similar to Ace and Sabo. As Roger laughs, are you serious, Roger? What are you, a little boy? And then Odin sits there, stunned, digesting what he just heard. So you see how in this situation, Roger is Luffy, Whitebeard is Sabo, and then Odin is Ace. So now we see this happen a few times, where Luffy and Rogers, their words get cut off, 
and we don't get the full scope of their dream. But now we know because of this chapter 1000 that Luffy and Roger said the same words. But what we also get from the latest chapter One Piece is how this is at the end of Luffy's dream. So being the Pirate King is the first step to Luffy's dream. And then the dream continues on from there. So for example, just how Brook, he wants to find Laboon. And he wants to find Laboon and he maintains his afro so Laboon is aware that that is Brook. And then he plans to, of course, play some music for Laboon, probably Bink, Sake, and so on. Sanji's dream is finding all blue because the all blue it has all of the aquatic life from all the oceans in one particular location, which is why so many chefs dream about the all blue. So when Sanji does find the all blue, or the all blue is revealed, Sanji's going to put his culinary skills to good use and he's gonna max out. And he's probably gonna create a whole bunch of different dishes, Gordon Ramsay style, to feed the entire crew and then some. So a lot of the strat dreams, they come in like a little bundle, obviously. But part of Luffy's bundle is kept hidden. So to understand Luffy's dream even further, we have to go back to what he said to Rayleigh in Shimone Capelago, because he talks about the reason why he wants to be the Pirate King to Rayleigh. When Rayleigh says to him, Luffy, can you conquer the seas ahead? The powerful seas and the tremendously powerful opponents, a place that is beyond your imagination and so on and so forth. But then Luffy says to Rayleigh, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't want to conquer anything. For me, being the Pirate King is simply the one who is the most free. The Pirate King is the person that has the most freedom in the seas. Now, the reason why that's important to understand, obviously, is that Luffy values people's ability to do what they want to do and not have anyone really hold them back. And this is why it's so tantamount to the last component of Luffy's dream, the part that's kept hidden. When you go back to Luffy's journey over the Grand Line, over the New World, Luffy has liberated so many islands and so many people from their plights, from their situations. So going back here, Alabasta was freed from Crocodile's tyranny by Luffy and the crew. Skypea was freed via Luffy and the crew. In Thriller Bark, the shackles of Lola and her crew, as well as Brooke, their situation and their issues were resolved and taken care of by Luffy and the crew against Gekko Moria. On Just Rosa, Luffy and company, they exposed the Flamingo and his tricks and his schemes, the tyrant that was ruling the entire country, who was going to wipe out the entire country, and Luffy and company are able to shut that down. Essentially speaking, wherever he tends to go, he tends to liberate and free people. And that's a part of who he is because that is ultimately his end game, where being the Pirate King means that he has the most freedom amongst the seas. And Wano Country is in the same situation. It is a running motif of the series. But there's always that final part, that final bit, at the end of all of these things that happens. Whether it's Thriller Bark, Post Any Slobby Slash Water 7, Skypea, it happens almost every time. And that's the big party. It's the big party. I think it's honest to God just that simple. At the end of Luffy's dream, Luffy wants to have this gigantic party. A party that would probably encompass, at least on paper, the entire world a global party where everyone across the world will celebrate because so many of the arcs are a microcosm of who luffy is as a person and what he wants to achieve for his dream we can apply this notion to the world government the world government will probably be abolished in some way to perform in particular the tenry Bido, in particular, the Gorosei and obviously Emu. Once they have this global war, like what we talked about, a global war that will encompass the entire world. Once that global war hits, and then the people are free from the tyranny of the world government, from the tyranny of the Tenry Bido, no more global taxes and that kind of stuff, I think Luffy plans to have this gigantic party, which sounds kind of stupid, but at the same time, it does coincide with Whitebeard's words to Roger. If Roger had the same thing in mind, that's the reason why he probably called Roger a little kid, which is also the reason why, probably, Ace told Yamato, don't laugh at that, because it sounds really ridiculous to have a global party. 
but it happens every time or, or almost every time luffy and company free an island from a situation involving a very powerful person or in in general at the end of most arcs there's always a grandiose party at the end of alabasta him and the strat crew are partying with these soldiers in the dining room hall they're having a good old time at the end of water seven there's a giant party that's the same party where alkaji talks throughout for the last time the party at the end of thriller bark when brooke joins the crew and they're all singing binks and sake uh at the end of fishman island there's a party there too after Horton's defeated at almost every junction there's always a grandiose party. And if the arcs themselves are a microcosm of Luffy's person and his dreams and his goals, then at the very end of the series, the same thing would follow suit. And this is a panel, a double page spread, probably several double page spreads. It could be an entire chapter of nothing but partying. Keep in mind this, Oda revealed last year that one of his favorite panels that he drew was the first giant party in Skypea, where the wolves are dancing around the fire. In Skypea, there's actually two giant parties. Oda loves those party scenes. He loves drawing those panels. One of his top three favorite panels of all time that he drew is the one in Skypea, that party panel. You can't tell me that Oda doesn't have that in mind come the very end of the series. When it comes to Luffy's dream, I guarantee you it's that simple that childish but it means a lot in the grand scheme of things that giant epic party where like every page every double page spread in that chapter of a party is going to be like where's waldo where it's going to be the vast majority of the characters that we've seen throughout the entirety of the series in every page possible but if not that then at least for the straw hats and for the media folks around them and it probably recorded also via den den mushi uh, across the world just how marine ford war was broadcasted to other islands like archipelago well in this case this final grandiose mega party will probably be broadcasted to not just that island but probably a whole bunch of other islands across the world where it'll be a giant party a giant celebration of the world government's defeat and downfall and then the world itself being liberated from their tyranny and then monkey d luffy headlining it's gonna be a massive feels good chapter oh <laughs> feels good man times a million it's gonna be a really awesome feels good chapter and if there's ever going to be an appropriate time where sanji is going to cook all the ingredients he's gone from the all blue it would be during that final grandiose mega party we're gonna see fishman island partying we're gonna see wano country partying we're gonna see alabasta partying we're gonna see like the body to restaurant partying everyone is going to be partying like legitimately speaking Honest to God, I can see it being like one chapter of nothing but parties, nothing but raves going on. People popping bottles, Chris Bosch style, everywhere across the world. But the MVP is handed to him by Bill It's going to be a really good chapter. <laughs> it's going to be a really fun chapter. But that's my guess, ultimately speaking. And there is one last part to this as well. One last part. When Yamato mentions that the quote unquote great guy said the same thing that Luffy did, and Oda was shocked by those words, Ace says, Oh, yeah, a great man, huh? That's good to hear. Maybe one day me and Luffy should sit down with him for a drink. Oda may use that imagery in the final global party chapter. In uh, Stampede, we had that one girl use her ability of illusion to actually cast the illusion of Ace right next to Sabo. And so something simple could happen here. There's an imaginary ace and an imaginary Goldie Roger at the greatest party in the world. Maybe even many of the fallen characters in a way. And then they have this party through the imagery that Oda made drawn to those panels. Or it could be the case where Luffy actually passes away. He dies from the end of the series. And then in the afterlife, him, ace, Roger sit down and have a drink. So at the end of the day, it sounds crazy. It really, really does. However, it does match Luffy through and through to the bone. That I think is undeniable. 
But let me know your stance on the subject matter at hand. Be sure to rate the video. Not that hard to do because I guarantee you all, you had rice call Zay Mousu. You use Zay Mousu to click, 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 rate the video, to click, 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 subscribe, to click on that bell to join the squad. And of course, as always, feel free to please do comment in the comment section down below. Peace out, y'all. Take care. Have a nice one.